So Paul and I are working on um, decentralized sharing here these two days. Um, and uh, this is a collaboration to the microphone. Uh, collaboration between um, Cozy, uh, OwnCloud, and Known. Um, Cozy is, uh, oh, I don't know if it's connected. So Cozy, you already saw it yesterday, uh, is a personal cloud you can host, customize, and fully control. Uh, on cloud, you already also saw it yesterday. Is um, access your data from all your devices on an open platform you can extend and modify. And known is uh, more of a blogging uh, tool. And the point is that uh, you can, there's lots of software that um, people develop that you can run on your own server. And there's a, a risk that it's this uh, creates monocultures. Um, so a monoculture is where it's very nice that we now have um, diaspora and I can um, post on diaspora and my diaspora uh, friends see it. But if somebody else uses known, then there's no link between diaspora and known. And so we maybe we solve the way of um, creating a decentralized alternative to Facebook or to Dropbox or to whatever proprietary services. But um, if each project just develops its own technology and this technology is um, not compatible with the, what the other projects are developing, then we're just um, creating new silos where uh, you're free to host a server of this specific um, software stack uh, wherever you want. So in that case, in that sense, it's decentralized, but we would create a world where 20% of people are on this software, 20% are on that software, and we still have um, a world where we're not connected. So to try to solve this, a lot of people are uh, doing lots of workshops. Uh, there was um, Federated Social Web, which is not so active anymore. Most people from that uh, initiative moved to uh, IndieWeb. And um, there's this social work, social web working group from W3C um, that works on web standards that all these software products can uh, live by. And then if they all do that, then they'll also be interoperable. And then there's this um, new little rogue project um, from Cozy, Known, and OwnCloud which is we'll just um, sit together and see what we can build um, without thinking too much about uh, what, uh, without too much discussion, but just let's try to build something that about interoperable, interoperability of personal servers. So um, we had a discussion in London at Floss for Peer-to-Peer, -peer, and um, we've been working a bit on it since then, and now we came to what we wrote there on the board, decentralized sharing, uh, Alice uses Cozy, Bob uses Known, and Alice wants to send one of her photos to Bob. How does she do that? Right now she cannot do that um, because Cozy and uh, Known and OwnCloud cannot talk to each other. Um, she can download the photo from her Cozy and then email it, but um, that's not such a nice user experience. So we are writing in this Etherpad, which you are all invited to join and um, read and edit. It's etherpad.mozilla.org slash DEC sharing, so D-E-C sharing. Um, and um, yeah, you can um, uh, type your name on the top right where it says enter your name. You can also write in the chat if you just want to make a comment but you don't want to edit. Um, and what we are trying to do, uh, we want to make this into an internet draft so that we submit it to the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force which are sort of the elders of the internet. Um, and um, <laughs> the elders of the internet, yeah, that's true. That most of them are pretty old, actually. Um, and yeah, this, well, this is where we are now. We're continuing today. Uh, but we started that yesterday morning. Hmm? Yeah, it's etherpad.mozilla.org slash DEC sharing, so D-E-C sharing. Yeah. Um, so what we're trying to do, there are certain, there are um, 
obviously there are already complete solutions that do this, like saying, yeah, uh, the solution is that everybody just uses own cloud and then it works because in own cloud there's a function to say share this file with somebody on another own cloud server. Um, or um, yeah, we can say, well, if everybody uses an RDF store, then um, we fix the problem, right? Uh, but then there are people who say, yeah, but I don't have an RDF store. And then so that solution doesn't work either. Um, so then to, to try to break through this uh, siloed discussion a bit, we structured it in terms of steps. So we see what the steps are that, uh, that need to happen um, and what the problems are to be solved in each of these steps. And then per step, we discuss different uh, solutions that have been come that have come from different directions. So the first step would be uh, to initiate the sharing process. So Alice uh, has some web interface for, to her personal server, and there she can browse through her photo albums, and she selects the photo. And then there's probably a button there saying um, share this with somebody. Oh, uh, Joachim. <laughs> Um, and once Alice has selected the photo, she says, okay, I want to share this with Bob. But she, if she just types Bob, then it'd be nice if her personal server would look in her address book and um, fill in one of the Bobs from her address book. Um, so recipient selection is a big problem because even if you have an address book where you have... Um, uh, you have your contacts in there with their full name, then maybe you don't have a contact method in there that allows you to send them a photo. Um, so uh, Alice might have to do a, a web search to find Bob's homepage, and then from the homepage, it might, there might be um, some way, uh, this might be machine readable, um, where, you, where you can discover how to send something to Bob. Um, so, and that already ties into recipient notification. Um, where uh, the way we discuss it here, you're not actually sending um, the file, you're just um, notifying, you're sending a, like just a ping, and uh, then Bob can retrieve it, uh, either uh, by going to look to the URL that he's been no notified about, or um, through a machine, machine to machine, uh, fetch. Um, we could maybe also discuss how to actually send it so that um, it goes straight to Bob like you do with email, but um, that um, is not so efficient because if Bob doesn't want to receive the photo then it wastes bandwidth and uh, it can lead to spam problems. So uh, the easier way is to just send just a notification and uh, in the notification you can already say um, that you invite uh, Bob to comment on this, or you invite Bob to propose edits, uh, which is sort of like giving them right access. Um, but uh, we reckon that um, this is, it's, we don't want to impose one ACL um, or um, access control list system, because then they would have, the servers would have to be compatible again. So we just say, in a notification, you can signal that I invite you to send me uh, updates and then when Bob actually does updates there are different ways that Alice's server can display that like saying this is a pull request or a proposed edit from Bob or maybe Alice says well I'm sending this to five people but that person is allowed whenever that person changes something apply it directly and then uh, the other people also see that change directly so you ping those other people again saying there's been an update um, by this other person um, so yeah, recipient selection, recipient notification, human access, this is important that if we build a system that uh, it, it degrades gracefully that if you receive the notification um, and you find it somewhere in a URL, and if, if you go to that URL, there should be a, a way for a human to log in um, with some uh, mechanism, maybe Bob has an open ID or an indie auth or a web ID plus TLS. Um, which he can use to log in, and um, that he can view it with his browser. And but obviously, it's nice if we can also. Uh, oh, I see Bob's logged in. Um, if we can also do uh, machine access, so that Bob's server can retrieve it from Alice's server. 
And then Alison can publish more edits, so you keep changing it, and you just ping saying, hey, this is still the same URL, but I edited it. Um, and um, she might publish something. If she has a file server and a blog server, then she might send it from the file server to the blog server with Micropub, which is a new um, exciting uh, protocol good for creating blogging editors. And um, yeah, then we talk about real-time collaboration, so how can we make it real-time? And after you've shared something, you might want to, uh, you say, this person uh, apply his changes directly, you want to revoke that, um, or you want to remove the, the shared file entirely if it's not been accessed yet. And then way at the end, we discuss data domains, which is sort of a bit of an elephant in the room, like, yeah, okay, so I shared this file, I received all these bytes, what does it mean? And then Alice says, well, it's uh, application type, application slash vCard, but Bob's server doesn't use vCards or whatever. So that's, and also, if you want to do automatic conflict resolution, so you're really going to collaborate on, for instance, a markdown document, then both servers have to understand that this is a markdown document and that inserting a line and inserting another line can probably be merged automatically. Uh, but if you edit the same line, then maybe you have to uh, do conflict resolution. So this is the Etherpad. You're all um, uh, invited to uh, to join and, and maybe write something in the chat or edit some of the text. And then at the end of the day, we'll uh, put it into internet draft format and submit it to the elders of the internet. Thank you. Thank you.